Welcome to the IPA Champions Cup, live on Sporty Stuff TV. Well, a very, very good evening and welcome to Sporty Stuff Champions Cup, coming to you live from Church Fenton. Bit of a lot, not too far away from Leeds, but what a great night we've got in. Well, it's Paul tonight is absolutely fantastic. Anyone don't know me, I'm Gary Wilkshire, Akar, the belly from the telly. I don't know why they call me that name, do you, back home? But uh, I've got with me one of the best Paul experts in the game, and he is my old mate. Ain't seen him for a long time, Mr. Mark Pickworth. How are you, Mark? Yeah, doing really well, Gary. Thank you. Thank you for learning me all about Paul this evening, and... Uh, I know you come from Vegas and it was uh, quite a ride for you to get here this week, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. It's not the Vegas that everybody wants to be living at. Uh, oh, you're not Las Vegas, Mark, no. No, is that what you thought I was? I thought you were Las Vegas. No, definitely not me. I'm from Skeggy Vegas. From Skeggy Vegas? Yeah, it's just as good as Las Vegas, isn't it? There's nothing, there's nothing between Skeggy <laughs> Vegas and Las Vegas, you know that. Anyway, this evening here we've got absolutely some six fantastic matches, haven't we? In the first one, we've got the world's number one. And I'm really looking forward to see Liam Dunster play. You know, he was very, very short price favourite, isn't he? You know, to win this, to win this group here tonight, Liam. And uh, I think he started off this morning just under even money, and he's gone into eight to thirteen. There's so much money been put on Liam today, but he is the world's number one. But the other three players are also good players, aren't they, Mark? Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, Liam's got a very tough game, and very first off, he's got Matt Steeper. You know, he's an amateur player, Matt. But he, he's going to be a professional player next year. So he is one to watch in these coming years. His nickname, Max D? He's the sexy one. Is that, didn't he used to be called the sexy oh, one? A long, long right? time ago. When I was about four or five, I think. When I won the <laughs> title. I remember when my mum and dad took me to Butlins and I won the, uh, in Blackpool, I won the Junior Tarzan competition. I've still got the picture back home. But that was a long, long time ago. Over 60 years ago. But... Memories, you never lose memories, did we? No, you don't. But, you know, Liam Dunster, like you've already mentioned, the world number one, he, he's coming in here right in form. And, you know, he's won these last eight matches, well, he's won eight matches out of the last ten, and he, he is a man in form. But and a 72% win rate in the, the last five years. I mean, just look at that record. It's unbelievable. Eight matches in a row he won. Bit and of one of them was a it? final. It Bit is, and especially in the, the standard of the IPA. We're one about the world's best players. And here. a lovely boy as well. You know, he, I spoke to him early. He comes from the kingdom of Fife and a lovely, lovely chap as well. And, uh, you know, really, it, yeah, it's a privilege to be here this evening. Yeah, but as I said, he's up against Matt Steeper. You know, he's an amateur player. He's ranked a fifth on the amateur rankings currently. I mean, even that record, you know, he's won seven out of ten matches. He's only got three losses. Yeah, you know, that's the standard. You know, and the standard in pool uh, for me and for people watching back home, uh, amateur to professional, there's not a lot in it really, is there, Mark? There really isn't. And uh, Matt Steeper, he will be professional next year without a shadow. Right, oh, that's good. And after the first match, we've got match two. And I know you, I spoke to you earlier about this one, you fancy a draw coming up here because you told me, you said, Gal, there's nothing in this match. You know, it, it could go either way. And, you know, 3-3 free, free is a big, big price here between Jake Newlove uh, versus Scotty Anderson, the boy from Leicester, got the Leicester blue on as well. And, uh, well, 5-2 to two to draw. So what that means back home, if you have two pound on, and you win five, so you get seven back for your two. So you think that's a big price to draw in this match, don't you? Tell me why you think this could be a draw, Mark. Well, Jake Dillon knew, love. He has got an IPA title under his belt already, so he's going to be really tough. But also, Scotty Anderson is in his first year in the IPA ranks, right. and he's, he's had a great year. He's ranked number 13 at the moment on the rank, amateur rankings, and he is definitely going to be a professional again. And he's one to watch. And he got to the last amateur final. He had just got beat by Michael Tomlinson, who we're going to see in event two. But... You know, but look at Scott's record on there. He's only lost three matches as well. The, these four players that we're going to see this here today, they've all got good form. I love the nicknames. The Pigeon, Scott Anderson, and his opponent this evening, a man who I go in a lot of their shops, he's called The Butcher. He certainly and is. And I love a bit of meat, Mark, I really do. And he could, well, you think this one's close, don't you? But in my eyes, you know, I'm going to go with you. You're the judge, you're the expert, you're the pool expert here this evening. I'm the betting expert, so if we put our heads together... For the viewers back home, we should get them a few quid and then bookie boys will be crying their eyes out by the time the early hours of the morning. 
Yep, we certainly will. I mean, these are the some of the odds and that. I mean, Liam Dunster to win to group today, like you've already mentioned, eight to thirteen on, and to win event one, three to one. That is such low odds, but he's the world number one, and there's a reason why he's only three to one. Look at them prices, though, Mark. You know, event one winner, three to one. If this was an horse race, and I do know what I'm talking about with horses and greyhound racing, but if this was an horse race, you've got a three to one chance, a twenty eight to one chance, a twenty five to one chance, and a forty to one chance. That three to one looks short, but he must be different class. He's up against, you know, to see them outright prices. I've put up a bet tonight here. I've got a belly buster for all the people back home. I don't know if you can see here. I've got an hot pot treble here, and it's Liam Dunster to win all his three matches. Now, it works out the odds. I've been up all night working this one out. <laughs> it works out five to one. Now, if... If Liam's only three to one to win it, I know it's hard. I know you think there could be a tie somewhere in it and Liam could be up against it. But I thought five to one to win all the three. He's going to be my belly buster in the evening. On day one of the Champions Cup, he's my belly buster. Liam Duster to win all three matches. Get on quick. Five to one, I think that's a big, big, big price. Yeah, it certainly is. And we, I just want to bring something in about the draw. You know, I think the draw's a big price, and I've got one of my biggest picks. So I've also done a little bit of betting. I've had a little bit of help from you from working it out. So I'm still on the learning, and no doubt I'll be an expert by the end of it. But I've gone for match two and match three, both to be draws, and that is 10 to one. Well, can we show the camera? Yeah, that? 10 to one. There? Can you see this now? Match two, match Marky, three. Marky, he's got a pick with pick here. He thinks match two and match a match free, both 10 to 1 for the draw. So, uh, it, you know, you know the game. I'm only, I'm only, you know, this is new to me, Paul, but I want to give the viewers back home a bit of value. That's why we've got you here. You're the man for the value. You're going to tell us your opinion, Mark. And what you said there, match two and three, and it could easily be, because really and truthfully, none of these players this evening who are playing have played against have played against each other before. Is that right? That is exactly right. They've not played on any of the IPA rankings. Yeah, they might have played in other tournaments that go off through the country, but they've not played each other on the IPA ranks. Is that unusual to find people? Yeah, very much so. But, you know, we've got three amateur players here today um, and the one professional player. So that's the reason why they probably haven't played each other yet. But next year, let me show you that they're all going to be playing each other because all these three players that are amateur today they're going to be professional players so year. now you know mark why them bookie boys have got eight to 13 liam to win the group because as you said three amateurs up against the world's number one it's like in football terms it'll be i suppose manchester city nothing against article nothing against wick and wanderers but you're playing against team lincoln you're playing against them teams it's man city so if this was like the fa cup of football if we do get a result tonight and if liam does get, is a draw or does get beat in one of his matches. It's going to be an absolute shock, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, uh, there's no doubt going to be a lot of shocks throughout this tournament. You know, it's a race to four. There's, there's a possible six frames. There's going to be a, a possibility of a three-three draw as well. These are short races, what these players are used to. So I'm, I'm no doubt there's going to be a lot of shocks. I don't is it going to be one tonight? I hope not, because that's my belly buster. I've got <laughs> Liam to win all the three. You don't want the belly to be busted tonight, do you, Mark? We, no, we definitely don't. That's definitely good. not. So. I can't wait for the action, can you? I cannot. I cannot wait to watch it. It's going to be spectacular. When you're ready, please lag for break. Well, good evening, everyone. Liam Dunster wins the leg. Uh, our first match of the Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup, live from Leeds. And it's going to be a cracker. Matt Steeper against Liam Dunster. The world number one Liam Dunster up against... The amateur, the amateur qualifier, Matt Steeper, and he does have his work cut out. Liam there looking very focused, as always. Our referee, Ben Taylor Fuente, getting the action underway. It Champions will be Liam to break a, first up. Match one, best of six frames. First frame, Liam does to the break. Time running. So as Ben says, a 
best of six. The, the draw is very much in play here. As Liam gets us underway with an absolute corker of a break. But there are issues on the table. The, the red and yellow down towards the bottom left corner pocket. That's going to cause a problem. If it wasn't for that, these yellows would be would be pretty tasty, you have to say. Ten seconds. And he does have a couple of options there to to open this out. So I strongly suspect Liam will attempt a clearance from this first visit. Calmly dropped into the centre. And Liam's Champions Cup campaign is underway. Of course, prior to, to last season's Champions Cup, Liam had never lost Ten seconds. a match in this tournament. And then he was unceremoniously dumped out by countryman Ross Fernie in the very first match. So it's the second time in two tournaments he's playing in the very first match. Of course, regardless of the, the result this time, it won't be his last match tonight because he will have a couple more thanks to that change in format. Ten seconds. But you do wonder if Matt Steeper can carry on where Ross left off. That developing shot didn't work that well for Liam. And that was never going to sneak into the middle. So I think that's just a, a bit of a containing safety from the duster. And that brings Matt Steeper into the frame now. This is a chance. Ten seconds. Make no bones about it. Extension Liam's made cool. life difficult for, for Matt with... That previous shot, tying up the red on the left-hand side. However, Matt does have a red in the top half of the table. That red there, just he's just leaning over now. If he can land a little bit high on that, there's certainly potential to get into that area. But I think that potential may just have been thrown away. That's not a great shot from Matt. hasn't hit that particularly well and now he finds himself in a bit of trouble. Ten seconds. Of course Liam's made hard work for himself with that previous containing safety because he pushed his own yellow into a nasty little position over on the left hand cushion. Back to the table he comes. Just looking for Ten seconds. some way to open up this frame to his advantage. He strokes in that long yellow beautifully up to the top right. And now we are just, just waiting to see exactly how he's going to attack that area. Going for broke here. This is the chance. He can take the red above the cue ball up to the top right, stun into the red and yellow. But it's a bit of a risk. This isn't guaranteed to come out nicely. And it hasn't. And he's missed the pot. And he's opened up the first frame for Matt Steeper. Well, no, no, that ball has stopped for over five seconds. That yellow has just dropped in, but. The referee tells Liam it had been stationary for five seconds prior to it dropping. So it goes back on the table and Matt Steeper 
will get his chance to win this frame. Disappointment for Liam. Of course, the worst part about that shot from Liam, not only did he not really break his yellow out, he did break Matt Steeper's red out. And this is now a great chance. And although it's only 1-0, in these best of six matches, that is, that is quite a big lead. We heard our expert, experts I should say, Gary Wiltshire and Mark Pickworth talking before this match about uh, the potential for Liam to win all three. Well, I suggest those odds would go up if Matt can hold his nerve here and claim this first frame. And that is the beauty of this game. It's such a short format. Such a short format, but that is a poor shot from Matt. Previous positional shot let him down a little bit, left it tricky. He was obviously worried about the cue ball going in behind that yellow and blocking his path to the black. So a nervy start here, both players showing some Ten seconds. showing some signs of early nerves. It's beautifully done from Liam Dunstan. You can see how quick and reactive this cloth is by the fact that he's he's dropped that in dead weight and played it as a skill shot and popped it at once. Leaves himself perfectly positioned on the tricky yellow down the rail. And it drops. Lovely shot. Liam Dunster takes a one frame lead okay. against all the odds. It looked like Matt was going to clear up and, and take a shock lead, but Liam doesn't miss two chances in a frame. So I'm delighted to be joined in the commentary box by our resident expert, Mark Pickworth. Good evening, Mark. How are we? Good evening, Dan. I'm doing really well. What about you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Interesting first frame. A little bit of a, a nervy one, I would say, from both players. It was a, a shock to see Liam miss a couple of balls. And Matt, perhaps, do you think he'll regret that chance? Yeah, he will. <clears throat> I mean, he just sort of landed a little bit short on his sort of final red there. But Liam's took him out exactly at his clinical self. And, uh, and, you know, I was watching Matt it there. He got, got a little bit scrappy Training in the middle, didn't it? But, but Liam, he's, 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 as he normally is, he's in the lead. I think the, the biggest problem for Matt was that was such an opportunity to hurt Liam, um, especially with that five-second call from the ref. Foul. You know, did that ball drop down within five seconds? And obviously we trust our referees. So, Ben, when... when uh, stopped Simon. Liam from coming back to the table and, and you felt like that might be something that could get inside Liam's head a little bit whereas actually Matt didn't take that chance and now Liam's at the table with a free shot and a visit off the break as well and it's starting to look ominous already isn't it yeah it certainly is yeah there's obviously a bit of a talking point pretty much and uh, a lot of pool matches and you know did the did it drop in five seconds? But we know Ben Taylor Ferrente is the, one of the best referees in the world, and uh, he's probably got it right. And if anybody's watching it back and rewinded it back, like no one, you know, <laughs> it's going to happen in it without a shadow, especially in this day and age. But at the end of the day, Liam Dunst has took the frame, and now he's one nil up. Ten seconds. He is one nil up, and he. He's got a chance here to go too, hasn't he? But this isn't an easy chance. Does the the red nearest the black, does that go to the bottom left? Because if it doesn't, this is a very tricky chance. Yeah, I mean, sort of angles that we're looking at, it's tight. It really is. I mean, we might find out a bit more to see what he does. But he's landed straight on this now. So if he's just going to drop this in, the sort of red onto the plant, then he's going to leave the white there. And then we'll see, we'll see if it goes pretty much from that shot. It all depends on the angle he leaves as well, because he's got to be careful because he won't be having a shot after the one he takes next to that yellow. Ten seconds. That 
a moment of truth. He's played the plant. If that red does go, then, well, <laughs> it's his only option. If, if it doesn't, then he's in trouble. But if it does, I see what you mean. He's got to be careful here not to end up behind that yellow with the cue ball. Yeah, this can go wrong. He's got to get... Ten seconds. I mean, he's got options. He could come on and off the cushion, try and get the gap and back. Is that what he's tried? He has, and he's played it really well. He has. The back's still not ideal, though, is it? It, it? This just feels like he's chasing this finish a little bit, and that's not something you say that often about Liam. Having said that, I think that camera angle there may have just shown that that black goes up to the top left. Yeah, it does. It definitely doesn't go in the middle. Ten it seconds. definitely goes to the top left. Extension but cool. it's going to be a tough pot. He's going to need a little angle on that one, that last red on the cushion. So this is a pretty delicate shot. Again, he can come on and off the cushion, get his angle. Oh, just, just dropping it in. And I, I like the way he's played that. Lovely little shot. Yeah, he's left himself a little bit of almost a reverse angle, hasn't he? Just, to, just so that when he plays this, the cue ball just nudges away from that bottom cushion. You don't want to be queuing that black off the cushion. Ten seconds. Here we go then. This is a massive shot. Liam Dunster lining up the black for a 2-0 lead. Essentially first to four. He will feel very confident if he can knock this in. frame that is beautifully done from the duster he leads matt steeper by two frames to nil is the writing on the wall mark yeah it could be unless man can just get a chance he, he needs an easier chance i mean that chance in the first frame wasn't quite easy the, the clinical self needs to them out really well if matt had no chance at all though yeah i get what you're saying the, the, it wasn't the simplest of chances for Matt, but it was one that you would expect him to make most of the time, in my opinion. Um, it, it's just one tricky positional shot from, from the top and to the bottom of the table, and uh, and he didn't quite get it right. No, he didn't. And he also, you know, going in off on his break, that's quite, you know, you, at the top level, you can't, you, you don't get away with it, do you? You really don't. And that's the no, reason that why huge. Liam is 2-0 up. Frame three. Liam does to the break. Leading two frames to nil. Time running. Well, Liam's first break was a good one. It gave him a chance. It was a chance that he didn't take. But he'd love a ball right now. Well, that is a beauty. Yeah, and he's going to have an option of either set, really. I mean, obviously, the, the red and the yellow in the middle of the table, that's the, the tricky sort of area. So, But he's going to have options here, and he's going to have balls to be able to get into that little sort of uh, two set of balls there. Ten seconds. It's just down Extension to choice. Called. You know, for me, probably yellows, but yeah, he's got choices of both. Yeah, how do you see the the red and yellow sort of to the left of the blue spot if you like um I, I don't think that yellow would go to the center so if you did go yellows that kind of doesn't go anywhere does it? It, it that would need either developing or it might go up down to the bottom right if he moved the yellow that was nearest the black spot 10 seconds yeah it does and i think that's the reason why he's like he's obviously going to try to get into these now and that's not gone right oh, where's the white oh that was close that was yes. so so close a shake of the head from Liam, but I think he should be <laughs> should be thanking his lucky stars there, if I'm honest. Yeah, I mean, he's tried to cannon into them two balls straight away, which is, you know, what a lot of the top players do do. They go into the difficult areas straight away. But he's not come out, but he's still at the table. What can he do now? Ten seconds. Well, he's 
tried to get into it there, hasn't he? But actually, he's played the red off the yellow. And that red will go now. That red will go up to the top left. So this is all of a sudden, from looking like a, a poor first shot, he's created a great opportunity. Yeah, he certainly has. If you can control this, uh, this screw back here to get on these bottom two reds. And he'll leave the one in the Ten middle seconds. of the table till last, I, I suspect. But he, he, again, he's got options. It's just how he sees it. He's the man at the table. Matt Steeper missed that chance in the first frame and pretty much has yet to return to the table. One, one break straight in off. I mean, if you're Matt, Mark, how difficult is it to not sit there and replay that one missed red over and over in your mind? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of things going through his mind. He's just waiting for another chance. I mean, going in off on the second frame and then he's not looking like he's not even going to get a shot on this frame. Especially if Liam gets his shot right. Um, he's gonna, it's a very lonely corner and you're not getting any shots. But that's the beauty of this short race, Dan. There's going to be a lot of shots. There's going to be a lot of tension, a lot of nerves. There's going to be everything shown. Do you think Liam, certainly before, uh, certainly during that first frame when, when he left Matt the chance, he probably didn't expect to come back to the table. Do you think that that loss I mentioned in the first round of this competition last year will have been on his mind at all going into this? Yeah, I'd say so, definitely. I mean, Liam Dunster, all he wants to do is win every pool match he plays. He, he's such a competitor and uh, a great one at it. Um, he loves winning titles. He's won nine I IPA titles. He's got a 72% win record in, in five years. I mean, that talks volumes in its own right. And uh, as you see again, Go. clinical self again. And he's just clearing them up. And I think he's got a feel for Max Deeper. He's had, he's had me enough, what, a couple of visits in the, in the first frame. And those were really nasty visits. Yeah, uh, do you know what? I, I, think, I think Matt is a seasoned enough competitor that if you spoke to him now, he'd probably say, yeah, I've been unlucky a little bit, but actually I should have taken my chance when I had it. He knows he's playing Liam Dunster. He's playing the best in the world. Um, Liam is, you know, realistically one of the two best players in this entire tournament. It's him or Mark Farnsworth. And I think Matt knows that every sniff he gets, he's got to take. And if he doesn't, this is what happens. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what needs to happen here, he needs to keep the white on the table and he's going to be praying for one of the reds or the others frame to drop. Four. Matt Steeper to break. He needs a ball. 23 frames to nil. Time Would money. you be tempted to take a little bit off of your break in this situation? Well, I think a lot of players, they keep with what works for them and uh, just keep with what's working. I mean, this short race, you, you haven't got much chance to keep swapping things around. So he's, stick, he's stuck exactly with his guns and he's done the same thing. But look how this yeah. is. This table looks really untidy again. Yeah, it's, it's messy. And of course, he doesn't have the benefit of the free shot that he left Liam last time. So uh, this is a very, very tricky table for Matt Steeper. I don't think he's going to be negative. Seconds. Um, I've seen him play Extension a couple of times. Cool. I've played him myself. And it feels like he's a very, very aggressive player. So I think if Matt can see any sniff of a chance, he'll be going for these. Yeah, again, he looks like he's, I don't know, he's like, is it that into the far side of the pocket? So he hasn't sort of come straight back. Because uh, I think he was trying to leave an angle on this one that he's going for now to dislodge that yellow out. He it doesn't look like he's got the angle here, though. But he has across the table, and how unlucky is that? That is brutal. He's played that so well. Um, and to hit that red absolutely full, a double kiss. Yeah, it's it's got to be entering his mind that perhaps this isn't his night. That, yeah. is, uh, that is not, not what the doctor ordered. He does have a Ten chance seconds. to get on it, though. He can take this yellow in bulk up to the top left. There's another opportunity to break that out here, so not all is not lost just yet. And that is a very, very good shot. 
Yeah, it's a great pot. Has that red nudge that yellow out to go to the bottom right? I don't think it has, but he does go to the left middle now. So he is going to have options, but what is he going to go for here next? I think he's only got a double on, has he? I think I, I do seconds. wonder if he could snick that yellow he's looking at in and use the red as a bit of a blocker. He's gone for the double. Yeah, he's hit that too straight. Now, Matt Steeper may have played his last shot in this match. But Liam Dunster comes to a table that isn't looking all that nice on reds. There's certainly work to be done here. Extension called. There's not really anywhere to hide for Liam here either, is there, Mark? It, because of those two reds, uh, sorry, two yellows nearest the right centre, there's, there's certainly no easy safety on. So you sort of feel like Liam's forced into this a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, them, them yellows are all go. They've all got pockets. And uh, it all depends on... I mean, does this red... I think it might just pass. Go in this bottom left-hand corner. Ten seconds. Is he trying to play it off the ball? He has. What a clever That's shot that is. Such a good shot. That's so good from Liam Dunster. That is how you open up a frame to your advantage. That is brilliantly done. Ten seconds. He really does look like the man to beat here, doesn't he, Mark? Yeah, he's uh, started his stall out exactly as he wants to. I mean, he's still going to have a, another two matches, so he's going to have to keep his focus very much on them as well. But this Do is you a think, in a moment. way, if Liam were to take this out and win 4-0, um, and that's a beautiful double, <laughs> do you think that the 4-0 result would kind of hurt Jake Dillon, Newlove and Scott Anderson as well? Because they're sort of... Because everyone else in this group is essentially an underdog, Liam's the, the heavy, heavy favourite, the more pe frames people take off Liam, the more chance that they've got of going through. So uh, I seconds. think this 4-0 is a big statement of intent for Liam, but I think it actually hurts every player in this, not just Matt. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, yeah, but like uh, this, you know, this finish here, he's, he's definitely going to be taking this out and uh, it's looking like a 4-0 winner. Of course, this is the first of six matches tonight. And, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about when the when the action continues? Because it's not going to roll straight on, is it, Mark? Well, Liam Dunster is going to interrupt us before... <laughs> We even get the chance to talk about that because he's going to win this frame and the match, frame and the match. with Liam ease. Liam Dunster wins four frames to nil. As you hear a referee call it, Liam Dunster wins by four frames to nil. A consummate performance from the consummate professional that is Liam Dunster. That really is a superb start to his campaign and a very bad start for Matt Steeper. Cool, that, that was unbelievable, Mark. Oh, I, that was fantastic, Carl. 4 0. 4 0, just like that. Clinical performance why, there from Leon Dunster. That's why that boy's world number one, isn't he? That's exactly right. And I've got, you've got a feel from that steep, you know, he was sat in a chair there. He's just had to watch the world number one just clear up after you know clear what up. What I like about him, just everything's so steady. Everything's so steady, isn't he? When he comes, he doesn't, you know, it's just, oh. That was unbelievable.
Yeah, he's very methodical, the way that he goes about his style. Yeah. I mean, we've not seen the best of Matt Steeper there. We've got to feel, you know, when he, it's a tough game to come up against the uh, the world number one in Liam yeah. Dunster. But I'm sure we're going to see Matt come back. He's going to be a little bit disappointed with because uh, he had a chance of winning that first frame. And you know, he had the first chance, a first good chance to win that. He and didn't also, take he's that got chance. a feel of the table, hasn't he, Matt? When he plays the, you know, his other two matches, he knows how the table's playing as well, doesn't he, Mark? But yeah. that, honestly, for me, my first, really, my baptism of fire in the pool, in the pool game to watch that four 0 that's pure class. You can see why he's the, he's the well, the world's number one. Oh, that was fantastic, Mark. I loved it. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Absolutely. You know, even in your belly buster, and that, you know, and now I bet you're feeling a lot better now. A lot better. I don't know about a lot better. I feel, <laughs> a, I feel a world class better. I tell you, I'm with the world's number one, aren't I? You know, yeah. to win his three matches, five to one. That was a big, big price. Although, as you said, anything can happen. We've got another five fantastic matches to come on. You know, we've got the next match. You think the next match is going to be three three? It's going to be no four nil in the next match, is it, Mark? That's no. a that really, really tricky match, isn't it? But, but, but yeah, fantastic. And it's when it's on, around about 10 o'clock, isn't it? Match two? Yeah, match two, it will be on around sort of 10 past 10, past 10 I think. Uh, 10 past 10. Yeah. We've done our little, our little talk and that because we're going to go live onto Sporty Stuff TV. Um, but, you know, Jake Dillon New Love against Scott Anderson, this is going to be a classic. These, these sort of players, they're very even. They've got. They're very. They're both amateur players. There's not a lot in it, but for me, I think it's got to be a draw. Five to two for the draw. Oh, it's definitely. There might not be a lot in your wallet at the end of the day, <laughs> and the bookie's wallet, because if what we just see there, if Liam Dunster can win all his three matches, and if he does win four nil, four nil, four nil, I was going to say a champion is born, but a champion's already been born, isn't it? He's world's number one, isn't he, Mark? He certainly is. Yeah. I mean, he's not quite over the line yet, but them two players, uh, they've been watching downstairs about how well Liam's performance is. So they're, they're probably going to be thinking, oh God, what we're going to do here to try and stop him. But you know, take it for these are both great players, and they're they're going to give Liam a good game as well. Well, on the way here, we've got a, we've got a train station here at Church Fountain. And I think, I honestly think, the runaway train here, Liam Dunster, if you're on that train, boys, the next stop is going to be York Central because I think that is a champ. Well, we know he's a champion. But five good matches to come. You fancy 3-3 free, free in the next match, don't you? And who knows? Who knows? This is Paul. Anything can happen, can't it, Mark? It certainly can. And there's going to be a lot of upsets, a lot of drama. Anything could really happen. Short races. Dunster could win, lose the next match 4-0. I mean, oh. after that performance, probably not. Mark, but anything you ever see happen. a bookie ride a bike? That's why there's bookies. <laughs> That's why they made Dunster 8 to 13 from 4 to 5. Do you ever see a bookie ride a bike? Look at me. I've been a bookie for over 40 years. They've, ne they've not even made a bike big enough for me to ride, Mark. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've got a funny feeling tonight. You think there'll be shocks? I think it could be favourites night tonight, Mark. Six out of six, how about that? Is that what you wanted, is yeah, it? Six out You ever... You remember the school days, do you? Yeah. Six are the best. That's what you might get to. Well, if you if you can predict, six we want of them these bookies matches. crying their eyes out today on sporty stuff. All them, all them bookmakers, all our partners here, they want to see a favourite get beat. We've got the first one on. I can't wait to about ten past ten now for for match number two. But you think that'll be a draw? Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously we're going to be going moving across now to Sporty Stuff TV. We're going to be live on Channel 437, straight after the yeah, last and if, and if you haven't got Sky or anything else, then we can watch it on sportystuff.tv and we'll be live on yeah, there as well. Yeah, we can watch it on there, but uh, 437 Sporty Stuff, we'll be waiting to see that as soon as the last grand's on tonight. And then people can play all night, can't they? This is the beauty of Sporty Stuff TV. If you want a bit of fun... You can just watch it. If you do want to have a little bet, you know, with our with our sponsors of the, of the channel there, you can have a bet with them. But that first match, honestly, I, it was unbelievable. I've never seen that. Position. Position. I can't spell it, position. But <laughs> when I used to go to school, they said if something's fantastic, position. Yeah, he certainly was. And uh, How do you spell position, Mark? We'll uh, come back at 10 past. <laughs> Don't worry. I hope you enjoyed the first game and uh, we'll see you. we'll see you later.